into, let's practice a few of these factoring questions and then move into section 4.1, which is on the next page, but you need to practice with me. Um, now, on a question like 7, you can do what I did in high school, and you can guess and check, or you can practice the Barry method with me, um, which works every time when there is no guessing and checking. Um, so if you want to practice the Barry method with me, I think that's it's a wise idea. We'll do it basically in 7 and 8. Um, the Barry method, it looks kind of magical at first. There's two, there's two things that look kind of weird, um, but it works every single time. We're going to pick up this 3 that it's at the beginning and multiply it times the 4 at the end, creating a brand new parabola that looks like this. 13x squared plus 13x plus 12. Okay, so we multiplied um, to move that down to the end. That was step number one. Okay, now, factor what you see right there. What kind of things multiply together to give you 12, but add up to 13, 12 and 1. So you guys do that really well. X plus 12, X plus 1. Now, here's where the second part of the magic trick comes in. The 3 that you that kind of vanished from the beginning is now going to reappear in front of both of the X's. The 3 appears in front of both of the x's. Now, the reality is there, there's a greatest common factor, maybe 1, maybe 2, that are extra that need to be thrown away. Do you see, look in the first parenthesis there, do you see anything in common that we can get rid of? The 3, right? And if we pull the 3 out, that leaves me with x plus 4. Is there a GCF in the next one that I need to pull out and get rid of? Thank you. I see somebody shaking their head. No, you are correct. Uh, so that's it. You factored it. X plus 4, 3X plus 1. Um, there's no guessing and checking. Now, I do know, folks, that this problem wouldn't be that bad with guessing and checking because 3X squared only has one option, X and 3X. So guess and check wouldn't be too bad. Unless I give you 8x squared or 12x squared. And now you've got a lot more options to worry about. I, don't, I didn't like the fact when I was in high school that the only thing I had was guessing and checking. But I know you need more practice. Look at question 8. In question 8, there's a GCF. What is the greatest common factor in question 8? 5. I suggest you pull it out. And if you do, what are you left with? 5x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now, the next question I'm going to ask you, is the remaining quadratic factorable? Uh, the answer is definitely yes. Somebody asked me last period, when do I know I can stop? If you get all linear factors, you definitely know you can stop. Linear factors have exponents of 1. They don't have x squared in them. Now, there are times when we do have quadratic factors that don't factor any farther, but I'm not going to be trying to trick you with a bunch of those or anything like that. Um, so, think about what you need to break that down into. Well, it's probably a little bit more complicated than just filling out, so I'll put this in my answer blank because I know that when I'm done, I'll have something that looks like this. But we need to practice that Barry method again. So we're going to take the magic 5 and multiply down there, and that would give me x squared minus 2x minus what? What is 5 times negative 3? Negative 15. Okay, factor it how you normally would factor that. Factor it the way you normally would. Stanley would be a good idea. Not Steve's. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Okay. 
Um, it does px minus 5x plus 3. Now it's time for the 5, this 5 right here that magically disappeared before, to reappear in front of both x's. Okay, and now we ask ourselves the question, do each fa does each factor have a GCF? Some do, some don't. Sometimes both of them will. Does the first one have a GCF we can pull out and throw away? Okay, if you pull out the 5, what are you left with? x minus 1. What about the other one? Does it have anything to pull out? No. Leave it alone. Now the 5 that's out here in front, that was the original 5 that you pulled out. Separate from the 5 that was in here. That's a different issue. It needs to be in your final answer. Okay, these are differences of perfect squares. We practiced those in the notes. What do we do for this? Noticeably missing, folks, is a middle term, right? Because it's a zero, as I showed you in the notes. This one's called a difference of perfect squares. Obviously, it's x and x, but what do we do? Factors of 36, and they... Obviously, the only way to get a negative 36 is to have a plus and a minus. But they have to add up to nothing. What do they have to be? Now, where did we get that number from? We square rooted both of these, folks. We square rooted both of them, and then you get one that's positive and one that's negative. Do it again. Question 10, do it again. Use the same logic. So square root, square root, what's the square root of 9x squared? 3x. What's the square root of 25? And then you're right, we have a plus and a minus. Just like we did with the last example. Now, what do you get when you multiply 3x times 5x? 
15x, what do you get when you multiply negative 5 times 3x? Okay, those of you ignoring me, this is kind of important. 15x and negative 15x, what do those add up to? Zero, which is why you don't see that middle term. There's nothing in the middle there because they cancel each other out. Okay, that's why that's your final answer. Jump down to question 14. There's a GCF in this one. What is the GCF? 6. So start by pulling out the 6. Remember, when we say that we're pulling it out, we're dividing. What are you left with if you pull out the 6? Um, I will give you that on this part. What's the, what's the first part? 1c squared, right? Now, what you need to recognize is that you have a, perf a difference of perfect squares right there. That is something that can continue to be factored, and you need to factor it. Try that. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Square root of each, one's a six, and one's a negative six. If you had those, you are correct. Is this the same answer? Yep. Same answer. Full credit. No questions asked. That is. That's the complete factorization. I don't care which one you write down. That is it. Okay, on 15, there's another greatest common factor. What is it? 12 does not go into 42. Nice try. 6 does, but that's not the only thing. What do they both have in common besides a 6? Well, 3 is, is smaller than 6. So we want the largest thing. You're right. 3 does go into both. 12 doesn't go into both. Folks, maybe it's not a number. <gasps> they both have an X in common. So 6x goes on the outside. What goes on the inside? Folks, you're dividing both of these by 6x. 7x plus 2. Is that true? Yes or no? Yes. Good. Now, here's my next question. Is this part in the parentheses factorable? Or is it completely finished? completely finished? It is completely finished. You need to have that confidence where you can say, oh, I'm done. The only thing I could do there is pull out a GCF. That's it. Sometimes, you know, I, I, students think they have to do something miraculous, which isn't even possible. I'm like, no, sometimes the question is just pull out the greatest common factor and be done. Okay, look at 17. Is there a greatest common factor? It's 5. Okay, so pull out the 5. What are we left with if we pull out the 5? x squared minus x. What's 60 divided by 5? 12. Is this part right here in the parentheses factorable, or is it completely finished? Oh, so we better keep going. We have a quadratic that is factorable. We need to keep going. Sorry, my, my daughter just <laughs> on stage, right, so that it's more humorous. Okay, now what? What'd you break up this X and X? What'd you break up the 12 and 2? Three and four. Okay, does it matter where the plus and where the minus goes? Uh, yes, it does. 
If the minus goes on the 3, and we double check this, that would be negative 3x and positive 4x. What do negative 3x and positive 4x add up to? They add up to positive 1x. Well, that's not that. So we need to do, we need to flip these. You're right. So this needs to be the plus and this needs to be the minus, And then this would work out correctly. That's good. Okay, sometimes you do need to flip the signs because you do get the wrong inside product. So, or I mean sum. Okay, confused about what? On question 17? Okay. So we needed two things that multiplied together to give us negative 12, all right? But they had to add up to negative 1, because the middle term there is negative 1x. So we were double checking by taking the 3 times the x, and the x times the negative 4. And when we added those together, we end up with negative 1x, which is exactly what we're supposed to get. The opposite gave me positive 1x, and that's why I knew it needed to be changed. Okay, so ask your questions so I can make sure I understand. No, no, she, she's, she's going to ask you something. Yep. Yeah, just just remember, do you guys do you remember doing something called FOIL first outsides, insides, lasts? That's what we're really doing, but we're reversing the whole process. So we're starting with the answer and we're working back to the factors. And so that's why sometimes it's a little bit of a guess and check game, because you're trying to think, okay, what multiplies together to give me negative twelve but adds up to negative one? Because these two in the middle, these two are adding together. You're right, the first give me x squared, the last give me negative 12, but the insides and outsides have to add up to give me negative 1x. Nice. I can do a dog. Oh, that would be so special. Oh, nice job there. Yeah, it's a little blurry, but you know, it's got the right idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Switch over to 4 1, please. Switch over to 4 1. Now, if you guys downloaded the 4 1 earlier, you guys that are using the digital, um, I, I did update it last period because I had the wrong one on there. So, if you're using the digital, it has been updated. It should look like this. Priceless. It's a MasterCard commercial? Oh, okay. Okay, uh, this one's a little bit different. This particular lesson's a little bit different for a couple reasons I want to show you. One says solve. Notice that the answer is x equals. The next difference is it's an equation. It says equal to zero. But what's common to the last lesson was you have to factor. Now, x, yes, I hear you, and I know exactly what you're getting at. And the answer is yes, but only in this situation, and I can tell you why. Okay? The question that's being thought about right now is why can't I just add 25 and take a square root? Okay, it does work in this situation only, but you've got to get used to factoring. You guys need to practice, so we might as well. What does x squared minus 25 break up into? x minus 5 and x plus 5. Okay, now, you have, what you see in front of you, which you may not understand is, you have something times something equals zero. Now I'm going to write it out with these letters at the top and I need you to pay attention. 
A times B is equal to zero. Next equation. Okay? If you are told that two things multiply together to give you zero, what do you know about one of those things? One of them has to be zero. Either A is zero or B is zero. That is the only way you can get it. Now, they could both be equal to zero, but you know at least one of them is. Now, what we're going to be practicing more tomorrow is this. x minus 5 is equal to 0, and x plus 5 is equal to 0. In other words, you know that one or the other of these is equal to 0. Now, if the one on the left is 0, what does that mean about x? Solve it for me. You get 5, right? One of the answers is 5. If the other one is true, the one on the right... It's negative 5. Okay, now I know those of you who were thinking of add the 25, take the square root. Yes, that does work in this situation only. But in what you'll see tomorrow, we will be factoring this into pieces like n minus 3 and n minus 2. And guess what? That little issue or that ability that you had on the last question. Hey, hey. Enough with the rudeness, man. I don't get that. Okay? Some of you should really read.